Hey there everybody, this is Austin Bach, we're back on Magic Online, and we are brewing some Standard. So we're a few weeks past the Pro Tour now, and uh, basically the Standard format has settled down to a point where we pretty much know everything that's going on. You've got your top tier of like Teamer Energy, Sultai Energy, Mono Red, and then like, uh, you know, God Pharaoh's Gift, and maybe some Control, but, you know, basically people are not are done with the initial brewing phase of Ixalan and have kind of settled into the format playing more or less the same strategies but I am not content to play the same strategies that have been around because I am a brewer at heart I'm always on the lookout for new things to do especially when a format grows kind of stale like this one has and people feel like you know the top tier strategies are a little too good maybe but either way like I think people are looking for more interesting things to do in standard and today I've got a list that I think can actually do that and it is a four color ramp deck uh, and I say four color even though it's pretty much just two colors splashing two others so it's a green red ramp deck and the reason I wanted to play it today is because I feel like Hour of Promise is kind of an underplayed card in standard right now uh, it no longer has the potential to just go completely nuts because you can't go get Shrine of the Forsaken Gods anymore and ramp out like Ulamogs and that kind of thing um, but the card's still very powerful <coughs> going to get you any two lands you want and bringing two zombies along if you have deserts is just a really good rate and I think that's a card that people should be playing more of so we're kind of building around it today to make sure that we can get it to work um, so the key card of the deck in my opinion is Gift of Paradise for a few reasons it does basically everything you want it gains you three life so it buys you some time when it comes down it ramps you by one mana uh, the following turn and all subsequent turns but it also produces two mana of any color, which is very relevant when we're trying to cast our off-color spells, which I will get it into shortly. Uh, Hour of Devastation is the other sort of mid-rangey important card, which is one of the better board wipes in standard that never really found a home, even though I think it's pretty well positioned right now. You know, it takes down, it can take down Hazarets, which is one thing against Mono Red, uh, just against Team or Energy, it just wipes their board, like pretty much every time. Sometimes they'll maybe have like a long test cup or something that survives, but anyway. Um, at the top end, since we can't play Eldrazi anymore, we've got some Planeswalkers and other and various things. Uh, Vraska Relic Seeker is a really nice top end threat. Just buys you time. It gives you a treasure, which is pretty relevant in this deck when we're trying to get to multiple different colors. Uh, and then it can just be a win condition on our own if uh, the game goes long enough when we are trying to draw the game out. Uh, Singleton Nickel Bolas, uh, basically a double splash, but you know we're looking to make that work anyway, so I think it's a fine top end card. Another card that hasn't really seen much play. Star of Extinction is like a more expensive Hour of Devastation, but it pretty much ensures that it gets everything you care about. Even though it does hit your own Planeswalkers, I think that's still worthwhile. Same with Hour of Devastation, even though it hits Vraska, it's definitely not a nonbo to have him in the same deck. And then a Singleton Sandworm Convergence at the very top of the curve, which is basically a pseudo Planeswalker that just is a win condition all wrapped up in one. But that's pretty much all it does, so I'm only playing one copy. I've seen some lists on Magic Online playing like two or three copies of this. And I don't know, maybe I determined that that's correct after some testing, but I feel like for game one at least I would rather have more modular cards and cards that can do multiple different things than just be a win condition, if that makes sense. And speaking of which, let's look at some other options. Walking Ballista is nice in this deck because it works pretty much wherever you need it to on the curve. Like, it's not great at 2 mana, just 2 mana make a 1-1, one, one, but sometimes that's what you need to do to not die to, like, Mono Red. And then later in the game, you know, obviously it can just burn someone out, or it can come down for, like, 6 or 8 mana just to take out a few things, buy you some more time. Uh, Cut to Ribbons is a 4 of in this deck. It's uh, really nice in this deck because... You know, it's cheap interaction. You do need to interact with your opponent. You can't ignore them completely, so turn two, you can take out their first threat. Uh, and then later in the game, you can just use the X mode to uh, burn your opponent out. So it's like an alternate win condition once you've chipped in for a few damage here and there. Treasure Map's another interesting one. It's just a card filtering engine early in the game. And then late game, it makes you a bunch of treasures, which fixes all your mana at once. And it also gives you a card draw engine. Uh, thanks to the Treasure Cove uh, half of it. And you can also additionally make uh, Treasure with Vraska to occasionally draw a few extra cards, but I, don't know, I think that's going to be pretty nice. 
Uh, Spring to Mind we're playing instead of Beneath the Sands because we can actually activate the backside. Um, you know, we're playing a few blue lands, um, mostly for Nickel Bolas, but also just to activate the backside of Spring to Mind to draw some cards. Gift of Paradise also makes double blue and double black for the cut to ribbons, which is part of what I'm talking about, why this card's so important. Uh, and then rounding things out, Sweltering Suns as su some uh, additional cheap uh, sweepers, but also just cycles when you need to if it's not good in the matchup, which is why I'm fine playing it in the main deck. But looking at the mana base, uh, a couple quick words. Maxing out on green-red duels, because green and red are the two colors we care most about early in the game. Uh, a couple of Evolving Wilds to smooth out our mana. Then a, sm a smattering of deserts. Um, even though we're only playing one Swamp, one Island, we're also playing one If Near Deadlands, one If New Rivulet. So even if we don't have a Gift of Paradise, we have the potential to get to double of our off color in certain games. Then looking at the sideboard, <coughs> got a few decent number of creatures Glorybringer, Arborback Stomper, which I also think is a little underplayed, just should be good against Mono Red. Carnage Tyrant for when people are bringing in negates or if we play against Control. It's a nice top end card that can't be countered and also combos pretty well with Hour of Devastation because it survives it. So possibly if we play against Teamer we can consider bringing it in also. Then uh, some appetites, some more interaction, and basically that's it. So yeah, I have no idea how this deck's going to play. I uh, I did base it on a couple of Magic Online lists that 5 owed, <coughs> but this particular build of the deck I have not tested yet, so this deck could be utter trash, or maybe we're onto something. But I guess there's only one way to find out, and we'll be back for round one.